Peace and Pan Africanism, Peace and Pan Africanism. Peace and Pan Africanism, Peace and Pan Africanism. Peace and Pan Africanism, Peace and Pan Africanism. Good Garvey Day to my Caribbean Africans. Good Garvey Day to my South American Africans. Good Garvey Day to my Central American Africans. Good Garvey Day to my Nova Scotia, Montreal, Toronto Africans. I will see you this weekend. Good Garvey Day to my Nova Scotia, Montreal, and Toronto Africans. I will see you this weekend. Good Garvey Day to my Montreal, Nova Scotia, and Toronto Africans. I will see you Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Good Garvey Day to my Africans in Europe, my British Africans, my French Africans, my German Africans, my Belgium Africans. Peace and Pan-Africanism to my Africans in Asia, the South Pacific, my Australian Africans. Melbourne, Australia, I will see you next month. Sydney, Australia, I will see you next month. Melbourne, Australia, I will see you next month. Sydney, Australia, I will see you next month. Peace and Pan-Africanism to my continental Africans, my Ghanaian Africans, my Mozambique Africans, my Malawian Africans, my Ugandan Africans, my Congolese Africans, my Ethiopian Africans, my Liberian Africans, my Senegalese Africans, my Togolese Africans, my Benin Africans, my Cameroonian Africans. Peace and Pan-Africanism to my Lesotho Africans, my South Africans, my Zimbabwe Africans, my all of my Africans, peace and Pan-Africanism to my Carolina Africans, my California Africans, my Omaha Africans, Detroit Africans, Chicago, St. Louis Africans, my Louisville, Kentucky Africans, my Indianapolis Africans, my South Bend, Indiana, Indiana Africans, my Pennsylvania Africans, Jersey, Rhode Island, my Boston, Massachusetts Africans, we're my Connecticut Africans, my Miami Africans, my Orlando Africans, my West Palm Beach Africans, peace and Pan-Africanism to all of my African family. This is your big brother, Dr. Umar Ifa Tunde, coming to you live and direct from Nat Turner's Virginia. Coming to you live and direct from Nat Turner's Virginia. Coming to you live and direct from the prophet Nat Turner's land on the occasion of the prophet Nat Turner's 224th solar return, which coincides with the annular solar eclipse in the sign of Libra. Nat Turner was a Libra. Where my revolutionary Libra's at? Nat Turner was a Libra. Where my revolutionary Libra's at? Nat Turner was a Libra. Where are my revolutionary Libra's at? Dr. Umar happens to have a Libra moon. Dr. Umar happens to have a Libra moon. So this full moon in Libra that occurs at 2.49 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today, this full moon in Libra that occurs at 2.49 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, four minutes after the highest point of the solar eclipse, which takes place at 2.45. The eclipse is happening now, but the highest point of the eclipse is 2.45 today, Eastern Standard Time. And the new moon in Libra is four minutes later at 2.49 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Oh, yes. Revolutionary solar eclipse in Nat Turner. Revolutionary solar eclipse in Nat Turner's birthday. Revolutionary new moon in Libra, Nat Turner's birthday. Oh, yes, brothers and sisters. Didn't I tell y'all? That Pluto is going into Aquarius November the 19th. That's why you're seeing all this drama. All these celebrity takedowns. And now the port workers want to strike. And now the port workers want to strike. And now the port workers want to strike. It's revolution time. The only question, how long will it take for African people to get involved in this revolution? How long will it take for African people to get involved in this revolution? I'm talking from Alabama to Angola. I'm talking from Ethiopia to East St. Louis. I'm talking from Brooklyn to the Bahamas. I'm talking about the Bahamas to Brazil. I'm talking about Panama to Pennsylvania. I'm talking about Nova Scotia to Las Vegas, Nevada. How long will it take for the Africans to get involved in this revolutionary time? I want to talk to the HBCU presidents real quick. HBCU Edward Waters University, we have rescheduled for February. 
HBCU Edward Waters University in Jacksonville, Florida, we have rescheduled for Black History Month because the great queen Orisha, grandmother of the ancestors, she had to take care of some business down in Jacksonville with Hurricane Hyleen, if that was a natural disaster and not an unnatural white man made disaster. Only Olo Dumare knows that. Only Olo Dumare knows that. Only Olo Dumare know if Hurricane Eileen was a natural disaster that was brought by Orisha Oya, or was that the white man playing his biological games again? Rest in peace to all African lives that were lost during Hurricane Eileen. They say it's one of the worst hurricanes to hit. Northern Florida in quite some time, more than 100 dead, hundreds are missing. We send condolences to the families. Brothers and sisters, here's what I want to say to the HBCU presidents. I just received word that some of the HBCUs. I just received word that some of the HBCUs. I just received word that some of the HBCUs are entering into a contract allegedly with Adidas. Allegedly with Adidas. Allegedly with Adidas. And Adidas allegedly is going to start selling HBCU tennis shoes, basketball shoes, and other athletic paraphernalia and apparel. Here's what I want to say to the HBCUs. Here's what I want to say to the HBCUs. You signing a deal with any non-African company opens us up to exploitation. Sometimes you don't have a choice but to sign a deal with a non-African company. I understand. Sometimes you don't have a choice to sign a deal with a non-African company. I understand. But when it comes to shoes, when we have a black man named Jan Mexlinger from Pennsylvania, when we have a black man by the name of Jan Mexlinger who invented the machine to make shoes, a black man invented the machine to make shoes. So I need the HBCUs to explain something to me. If black people invented shoe making, if we invented the machine to make shoes, help me understand why the HBCUs of America cannot create their own shoe manufacturing company, putting ex-offenders to work, putting unemployed Africans to work, giving HBCU students valuable entrepreneurial experience, help me understand why we can't make our own sneakers. You're going to let Adidas exploit the history of your university. Allegedly, you're going to let Adidas exploit the history of your university just so they can put your name on a pair of basketball shoes. How about you buy a whole bunch of sneakers yourself and have somebody put your name on the basketball shoe? I'm bringing this up because you're going to lose most of your profit because of who you're dealing with. You're going to lose most of your profit because of who you're dealing with. Why can't y'all get a whole bunch of cheap sneakers from China or whatever and pay somebody to put your logo on the sneaker and sell them? to your alumni, sell them to your students, sell them to your faculty, your staff, sell them to your immediate community. Adidas is going to make hundreds of millions of dollars off of this agreement. Adidas is going to make hundreds of millions of dollars off of this agreement. I'm tired of us allowing people to appropriate our culture in the name of cash. I'm tired of us allowing people to appropriate our culture 
in the name of cash. The HBCU tradition is too sacred. It is too valuable. It is too important for us to let Adidas exploit the HBCU culture when you're only going to get pennies on a dollar. Why are we so comfortable with economic slavery? Why are we so comfortable with financial slavery in the name of Nat Turner? In the name of Nat Turner's top Lieutenant Hark. In the name of Nat Turner's loyal soldiers, Nelson, Sam, Will the Executioner, his wife, Cherry, all the soldiers of Southampton, the Black Revolutionary Army of Southampton, Virginia, 1831, in the name of this solar eclipse in Libra, in the name of this full, excuse me, new moon in Libra. Why can't we? make our own shoes brothers and sisters i want to leave that topic and i want to go to the diddy and the port worker strike i told y'all diddy was a distraction i told y'all diddy was a distraction that doesn't mean he's innocent that does not mean he's innocent two things can be true at the same time you can walk and chew gum you can drive and talk on the phone you can eat and you can breathe. Two things can be true at the same time, but Diddy was a distraction. I thought it was just for the election. It's bigger than that. That's a part of it, but it's bigger than that. Now you got the port workers striking. And part of the reason they striking is they getting tired of transporting sexually trafficked slaves in those big metal canisters that they move around and so they need diddy's sex trafficking allegations to distract us from the real sex trafficking allegation let me say it again i need you to understand overstand and understand i need you to understand overstand and understand i need you to understand overstand they're going to distract you with diddy so you don't hear about the sex trafficking that is partly at the root of why the port workers are striking. The Amazon workers are striking. I told you this is the age of revolution. Y'all didn't want to listen to me. I told you Pluto is going into Aquarius. The next 16 years will be drama for your mama. I said the next 16 years on the planet Earth, I don't care where you live. I don't care where you live on this planet, the universal order, the universal order is demanding revolutionary chaos, revolutionary chaos for the next 16 years. What are black people going to do about that? What are black people going to do about that? We're going to keep on being distracted with social media. Or are we going to get up and try to fight for our liberation politically, economically, socially, spiritually, culturally? Because the solar vortex is open. This eclipse right here is opening the solar vortex. Harriet Tubman's full moon is opening the solar vortex. Danger filled newbies full moon on october the 17th is opening the revolutionary vortex you got 16 years of revolution we're going to lose people we love god forbid there's going to be accidents there's going to be chaos there's going to be drama because orisha oya got to clean up the old to make way for the new don't get mad at the messenger orisha oya is coming through like a gladiator over the hurricane. She coming through like a gladiator over the tornado. She coming through like a gladiator over the typhoon. 
literally, spiritually, and metaphorically. It means anything that does not serve divine order will be exposed or destroyed. That's what it means. Anything that does not serve divine order will be exposed and destroyed. Anything that doesn't serve divine order. Anything from anyone, institutions, you're going to see black churches get exposed, white churches get exposed, politicians, celebrities, community leaders, activists, pedophiles, sex traffickers, scammers, rapists, you name it, brothers and sisters. Orisha Oya is going to blow the cover. She's coming through with the ancestors in the winds of change and she's going to blow the cover. She's coming through with the ancestors with the typhoon of transformation and she's going to blow the cover off of everything. Organ trafficking will be exposed. Husbands cheating on their wives will be exposed. Women cheating on their husbands will be exposed. People stealing from their parents will be exposed. Slanderers and defamers and saboteurs will be exposed. It's the time of the storm. And it is the time of the revolutionary Pluto that is Orisha Oya energy. Pluto that is Orisha Oya energy and she's visiting her husband Shango. The energy of the revolutionary, which is Aquarius. The female revolutionary is visiting her husband, Aquarius. There will be drama for the next 16 years. I told you, Pluto hasn't been in Aquarius since the Haitian revolution. Where are my Haitian Africans at? It's time for Haiti to stand up. It's time for Haiti to stand up. Haiti will rise again in these 16 years. Where are my Haitian Africans at? I need all the gangsters in Haiti to organize. I need all the activists in Haiti to organize. I need the righteous voodoo mambos. I need the righteous voodoo priests to organize and expose the phony voodoo priests. I said I need the righteous voodoo priests and priestesses of Haiti to expose the scammers and those who deal in evil magic, not black magic, because black magic is divine. I don't use European definitions. I don't use European definitions. I don't use European definitions. Black magic is the best magic there is. Black magic is the greatest magic there is. Black magic is the purest magic there is. So we don't say black magic. When you say black, you're talking righteousness. If you're not talking righteousness when you say black, don't use the word. Whatever you about to say after you say black, it better be positive. Whatever you about to say after you say black, it better be honorable. Whatever you say after you say black, it better be something powerful. In order for Haiti to rise, those who practice the righteous voodoo that came over with our ancestors from Benin, the voodoo capital, the priests and priestesses of Haiti who do righteous voodoo work. You do righteous work with Dambala. You do righteous work with Shango and Ogu. You do righteous work with the Loa. I need you to expose those who use the Loa for evil and for exploitation. It's the time now. If Haiti going to rise, Haiti got to get right spiritually. And most of Haiti is right spiritually. Most of Haiti is right, but you got some in Haiti who use divine power and energy and ashe to do wrong. They got to be exposed. These next 16 years, I want to see the African Union grant full citizenship to your scattered African children in the diaspora. I said these 16 years, I better see the African Union grant full citizenship to your scattered African children across the diaspora. Grant full citizenship, Africa, to your 
European Africans in Britain, in Liverpool, in London, in Wolverhampton, in Manchester, in Paris, in Austria, in Germany, in Ireland, in France, give them citizenship. Give it to your children, your scattered African children in Nova Scotia, in Toronto, will I be this weekend, in Montreal. Give it to your children in Panama, Costa Rica, Belize. Give it to your children in Guyana, in Brazil, in Suriname. Give full African citizenship to your scattered African children in Jamaica. Give it to your Cuban Africans, your Puerto Rican Africans, your Dominican Africans, your Turks and Caicos, Bermuda, Bahamas, Guadeloupe, St. Vincent, St. Croix, St. Lucian, St. Martin, St. Martin. We want full citizenship in Africa. The diaspora wants... Don't tell me what to do, my ninja. You just got blocked. Don't come on my live telling me what to do. I'm going to block you. This is my live. If you don't like it, get the off. African Union, give full citizenship to your scattered African children in California. Give full citizenship to your scattered African children in New York and New Jersey, Connecticut and Massachusetts. Give full African citizenship to your scattered African children in Houston and Dallas and Fort Worth. Give it to your children in Austin, Texas. Give it to your scattered African children in Memphis, in Chattanooga, in Nashville, where I will be Wednesday, October 9th at the African American Music Museum in Nashville for It's Up There podcast live interview, 6 p.m. Nashville, make sure you pull on up. We want citizenship, your scattered African children in Detroit. We are not pretendians. We don't claim to not come from Africa. We know we are African and we want citizenship in our motherland. We got 16 years of revolution. 16 years, I want to have 16 schools all over the world. 16 years, I want to... Black man, I'm telling my brothers right now, listen to me, black men. You got to get right with yourself sexually. Black men, listen to me. I'm talking to all my unapologetically African alpha males. I'm talking to all my unapologetically African alpha males. Black men, stop deceiving your women. Stop manipulating your women. Stop using your women. Stop abusing your women. This is the time to be exposed. If you got five queens, let them know I got five queens. I still love you. Are you staying or are you leaving? Are you staying or are you leaving? Get right with your queens. I need you to get right with your queen. Some of them won't mind because they know that they share in anyway. Get right with your queens, my brother. Black women, you cheating on your husband with your baby daddy, you will be exposed. Or you won't allow it. Sean Go won't allow it. The ancestors won't allow it. Ogun won't allow it. Obatala will expose you to the light. The spirit of the white cloth, Obatala, will expose you. Black woman, you sleeping with multiple men, you pregnant, and you don't know who the baby daddy is, this ain't the time to be playing them games. This is not the time to be playing them games. It started with the Harriet Tubman, new moon, full moon, and it ain't gonna stop for 16 years. It ain't gonna stop for 16 years. You stealing from your next door neighbor, you stealing from your business, you in business and you stealing from your partners. You getting exposed. You better get right now. You better get right now, brothers and sisters. Get right with your children. You know your husband ain't your daughter's father. You better let her know before her real grandma pull up on her. Your husband ain't your daughter's father. You better let your daughter know before her real grandma pull up on you. I'm telling you, all y'all is blowing the lid off all hypocrisy. Oya is blowing the lid off all secret misdeeds, brothers and sisters. It's time to get right. You a Roman Catholic, you better take your ass to the confessional. My black Catholics, I don't know how you're still in the Catholic Church after all that abuse, but that ain't my business. My black Catholics, you better get to the confessional. Black man, you sleeping with a woman and her cousin? You better stop.
It could cost you your life. Understand Orisha Oya. Because I have a Scorpio rising. Where my Scorpios at? Scorpios. Y'all going to have extra power this season. Libras and Scorpios are going to have extra power this season. Libras and Scorpios are going to have extra power. Scorpios, you got to be right. If you a Scorpio, because that's the sign of Oya, you got to get right. Because you will be the first ones to be exposed. You got a Scorpio sun, a Scorpio moon, a Scorpio rising. If you got a Scorpio sun, a Scorpio moon, or a Scorpio rising, if you got that scorpion power, that power of the blackest midnight, that power that nobody can see through, you got that hidden African dark powerful energy of Scorpio, you got to get right because you're the children of Oya. You got to get right. You got to get right. Sean Puffy Combs is just a symbol of what of, of things to come. This port worker strike is just a symbol of things to come. And I'll share this with you, brothers and sisters. I will share this with you, brothers and sisters. I think they manipulated the strike to occur at election time. I think they manipulated the strike to occur at election time. And I'm going to tell you why, brothers and sisters. I believe the power structure, the elites, the Bilderbergs, the National Security Council, the Trilateral Commission, the Federal Reserve. I believe they manipulated the port worker strike to occur right now so less people will show up at the polls because the elites want Scamala Harrison. Donald Trump is a nationalist. They don't want nationalism. They want internationalism. The elites want international banking, international military. So they are going to cause this chaos right now. So voter turnout will be extremely low. So Scamala Harris can be snuck into the White House in the back door. I'm telling you what I know, brothers and sisters. I did not tell you to vote Republican, you Democratic Party plantation slave. I didn't say one word about voting Republican. The problem with you slaves, the problem with you slaves is you feel like you got to be on some white person's plantation. That's what's wrong with y'all. Same reason why a lot of black people never go into business for yourselves. Why do so many of us never go into business for ourselves? You know why? You only feel comfortable on the plantation. You on the IRS plantation, you got half decent pay, half decent benefits, but you ain't got no freedom, but you, at least you on a plantation. You on the public school plantation, you on the post office plantation, you on the public transportation plantation, you on the fast food plantation, a Walmart plantation, wherever you at, you on some university plantation. But you don't want to be free. Every African got a little bit of slave still left in his blood. Every African. I don't care if your ancestors was enslaved in Jamaica. I don't care if your ancestors were enslaved in Honduras. I don't care if your ancestors were enslaved in Costa Rica. I don't care if your ancestors were enslaved in Panama. I don't care if they were enslaved in the Carolinas or Texas. I don't care if they was enslaved in Pennsylvania or Maryland. You got a little bit of slave left in you. And this is why so many of us don't like to strike out for ourselves. Nat Turner didn't care about what the future looked like. He couldn't stand his present. I said Nat Turner didn't care what his future looked like. He couldn't stand his present. What did El Haj Malik El Shabazz say when he talked about the house Negro versus the field Negro? What did El Haj Malik El Shabazz say when he talked about the house Negro versus the field Negro? Brother Malcolm said, Brother Malcolm said, the field Negro said, we running away. And the house Negro said, but where we going to go? And the field Negro said, anywhere is better than here. And the house Negro said, but wait a minute now. We get halfway decent food. We get the leftover scraps. We get a couple pennies. We get to get drunk on Sunday. 
The house Negro was comfortable with the crumbs of the power structure. I said the house Negro was comfortable with the crumbs of the power structure. The field Negro ain't never comfortable with anything except freedom. This is how you know if you are free African or not. This also goes for my brothers and sisters in Africa. Because you went through colonization. And colonization is the same thing as slavery. It just happens in your own land as opposed to a foreign territory. Colonization is the same thing as slavery. The only difference is it happens in your own land as opposed to a foreign territory. So what I say to my Africans on Africa, my continental brothers and sisters who I love with all my heart is the same thing I say to my Caribbean Africans who I love with all my heart. And it's the same thing I say to my Australian and Canada and South Pacific Africans who I love with all my heart. And it's the same thing I say to my Africans in Asia and Europe and throughout the United States with all my heart. And that is, are you tired of being a slave? And if you say yes, when I ask you, are you tired of being a slave? If you say yes, my next question, my next question will be, are you free economically? Are your children free educationally? Are you free agriculturally? So help me understand exactly how you free African, American African, Canadian African, Nigerian African, Eswatini African, Sudanese African, Jamaican African, Belize African, Nicaraguan African, Mexican African. Help me understand how you free and you don't have any food security. How you free? You don't control your source of income. How are you free when your slave master's great, great grandchildren are teaching your children? We ain't free. And we don't want to be free. But guess what? I got some news for you. These next 16 years, you are going to be forced to be free whether you like it or not. Do you know what they did during the Haitian Revolution? Do you know what? General Toussaint and Emperor Dessalines did during the Haitian Revolution. Do you know what Nat Turner and Hark and Will the Executioner did during the Southampton Revolution? Do you know what Gabriel Prasa and Denmark Vesey and Charles DeLong did in those revolutions? Do you know what a Kung Pong and Cujo and Mama Nanny did in those Jamaican Maroon revolutions? Do you know what Tula and Carpata did in Carousel during that revolution? Do you know what Mama Solitude and General Inyas and General Del Gras, do you know what they did in Guadeloupe during that revolution? They didn't ask you if you wanted to join. You got a choice, but the choice wasn't whether you wanted to join or not. That wasn't the choice. During the Land and Freedom Army, the Mau Mau of Kenya, long live Deedon Kamathi. Long live Deedon Kamathi and all my mighty Land and Freedom Army soldiers of Kenya. They didn't ask you if you wanted to join. They said, do you want to join the war for liberation? Or do you want to join your ancestors? You're going to join a community right now. You can join us in this struggle for Kenyan freedom. You can join us in this struggle for Haitian freedom. You can join us in this struggle for American freedom. You can join us in this struggle for Curacao freedom. But guess what? There is no going back to the plantation. You either going to join us or we sending you to the ancestors. Make up your mind. You got five minutes. Brothers and sisters, there is no walk in the fence. My mixed race Africans, it's time to draw a line in the sand. My mixed race Africans, it's time to draw a line in the sand. You are either for African people or you are against African people. I don't want to hear no more shit that I'm half and half and I'm mixed.
No more of that bull-ish because you don't want to choose a side. The only reason y'all running around calling yourself multiracial is you don't want to choose a side. Well, guess what? Orisha Oya and Orisha Shango sent me to tell you today, all mixed race Africans in the world, I don't care if you're a mixed race Canadian African. I don't care if you're a mixed race Australian African. I don't care if you're a mixed race Johannesburg African, a mixed race Cape Town African, a mixed race Soweto African, a mixed race Kyalisha African, a mixed race Durban African, a mixed race KwaZulu Natal African. I don't care if you're a mixed race Texas African or a mixed race Jamaican African. Pick a side and stay on it. Because the revolution is coming to this planet. The almighty supreme Lord and ruler of this universe is unleashing the demons and the divinities. Y'all didn't hear me right now. The almighty supreme ruler of the universe has ordered Orisha Eshu Elegbara to open up the gates. The demons and the divinities are coming to earth. The demons and the divinities are coming to earth. And the demons are coming to devour all those who do evil. The demons are coming to get their children and the divinities are coming to get their righteous children. If you are a doer of evil, if you are a doer of evil, the demons are coming to collect. You might leave this earth before your time. I pray you get right. If you robbing, stealing, raping, and killing, I pray you get right before the demons get to your ass. But if you are doing the right thing, to my righteous Africans, nobody's perfect. Righteousness does not mean perfection. Only the supreme is perfect. Only the supreme is perfect. Righteousness means that when I do wrong, I repent as soon as I can and get back on the good path. That's what righteousness is. Righteousness is I might fall three times, but I'm going to get up four. Righteousness is I might fall twice, but I'm going to get up a third time. Righteousness is I'm going to do the best that I can where I am. And if I do somebody wrong, I don't have a problem saying I'm sorry. You slept with that woman's husband, pull up to a job and apologize. Pull up to her job today and say, sister, you don't know me, but I got to tell you something. I was with your husband and I knew he was married to you. And I was in a state of weakness. I was in a state of sin. I was in a state of thirst. I was in a state of need and I was wrong because I did not have your permission. I should have came to you like a woman and asked you, would you entertain a plural marriage with your husband because I need a man? That's what I should have done. But I went behind your back and allowed your husband to clap cheek without your permission. I went behind your back and allowed your husband to wax Cinnabon without your permission. I went behind your back and gave your husband some of my cookies and peach cobbler without your permission. And I just want to say I'm sorry. I just want to say I'm sorry and I will never contact him again and I will never let him contact me again. And I would pray that you keep this between us. But if you feel the need to expose and shame me, I'm just going to have to deal with the consequences of that. But I just want to say to you, let he who is without sin, the black Christ of Ethiopia said, let he who is without sin. I said the black Christ of Ethiopia, Yeshua ben Yusef said, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. I'm asking for your forgiveness and I pray that you don't give me your wrath. Black man, you've been sleeping with that man's fiance and you know it. You've been sleeping with that man's fiance and you know it. It's time to get right. It's time to get right. You have to go on up and go over to the brother and say, listen, King. I've been clapping your queen Cinnabons. I'm sorry. Lust got the best of me. What I did was wrong. I'm coming to you, man and man. I don't want no beef. I don't want no drama. But I want to say this to you. 
you have a damn good woman. Yes, she cheated with you. She cheated on you with me, but you got a damn good woman. And I'm going to tell you this right now, brother, out of respect and love. I'm going to tell you this right now, brother, out of respect and love. Don't leave that woman because I came to you to repent my sin. I'm repenting my sin to you, my brother, because you are a God. I am a God and a God can humble himself in front of another God. I'm here to repent my sin. But I got to tell this to you, brother. Your woman is a good woman. She slipped. Give her another chance. In fact, I hope you don't even tell her I told you this and you just give her another chance and don't even mention this conversation because I will never communicate with her again. I've already blocked her on my cell phone. Don't you worry about that. But if you give her up, if you let your ego and your pain and your past post-traumatic baby mama disorder, if you let your post-traumatic divorce disorder, if you let your post-traumatic relationship disorder get the best of you and you dismiss your queen, if you give up your fiance, brother, I promise you this. I'm not going to touch her again while she's with you, but I swear I'm being honest with you, brother. If you give that woman up, I will receive her. I'm coming to you to repent my sins, brother. And I want you to work it out with that queen. I want y'all to stay together until the ancestors call you back. But if you let your ego take over and you leave that woman, I want you to know. I will be one of the first in line to catch her when she falls. I come to you for forgiveness. I didn't come to break up no family, brother. But if you break up your family, I promise you, I'm just going to keep it a buck. I will never go behind your back again. But if you let that woman go, I will be here to get her. Brothers and sisters. Are y'all ready for the revolution that's coming? If you owe your brother and sister an apology, apologize to your brother and sister. If you owe your mother or father an apology, apologize to your mother and father. If you owe your aunt and uncle, next door neighbor, best friend, your soror or your frat brother, if you owe them an apology, get right with the universe now because right now, God is sitting out the collection bureau. I don't think y'all heard me. I said right now the almighty is sending out the collection bureau. The Lord is sending out the collection bureau right now, brothers and sisters. You know how when you owe the credit card agency, you know how when you ain't pay your car note for six months and they send somebody to come and collect your car, they don't care what you're doing. They don't care where you at. They don't care what you got going on. They don't care what your plans is. They will take your car while you at your wedding. They will take your car while you at your daughter's graduation. They will take your car at your son's football game. When the IRS comes to collect, when the auto company comes to collect, when the credit card company comes to collect, do they care what you got going on? Do they give a damn what you got going on? So I'm telling you now, you're about to get married, it may not happen if you don't get right. You're about to buy a new house. You're about to get a new job. You're about to graduate from college. It might not happen if you don't get right with the almighty. Inspect your relationships. And if your mother and father are no longer here in the flesh, they still here in the spirit. Go to their grave, y'all. Go to the cemetery and apologize for what you did. If you have ancestors who you owe an apology to, go and make it right. Take nine pieces of fruit to your mama grave. Take nine pieces of fruit to your papa grave. Take nine pieces of fruit to your cousin grave. Take nine pieces of fruit to your niece's grave. Take nine pieces of fruit to your daughter's grave. Take nine pieces of fruit to your son's grave and take some water. Take some water, take some gin and spill that down nine times. And each of those times that you spill that water, I apologize for this, Ashe. Spill some more water or gin. I apologize for this, Ashe. Spill some more water or gin. I apologize for this, Ashe. Now, my Abrahamic religion, brothers and sisters, y'all might not understand this, and that's all right. My Abrahamic religious brothers in the Christian church and the Muslim masjid and the Hebrew temple, y'all might not know nothing about this, and that's all right. If it don't apply, let it fly. I'm giving you African spiritual science that predates your religion, so you might not understand this. 
I'm giving you African spiritual science that predates your religion. So you might not understand this. I'm giving you African spiritual science that predates your religion. So you might not understand this. So if it don't apply, just let it fly or just hop off the live. But I will not tolerate religious chauvinism. I will not tolerate religious superiority. I will not tolerate religious narcissism, brothers and sisters. African people, we are the people of the earth. We are not the people of the Christian book. We are not the people of the Muslim book. We are not the people of the Hebrew book. We are the people of the earth. Our religion comes from mother nature. Our religion comes from mother nature. From the all, we get the one. From the all, we get the one. See, what y'all fail to understand in those concrete, anal, inflexible religions, who I love and respect. I love and respect all the religions. Don't get me wrong now. I love and speak for myself. Let me block you because I'm already speaking for myself. Speak for yourself. Let me block you because I'm already speaking for myself. You need to understand something. That mother nature is a manifestation of supreme consciousness. Mother nature is a manifestation of supreme consciousness. Mother nature is a manifestation of supreme consciousness. And if you will but study mother nature, you will understand the supreme. That's what our ancestors taught us millions of years ago in the Nile Valley. That's what our ancestors taught us tens of thousands of years ago in the Nile Valley. If you study Mother Nature, if you study the sowing and reaping of the crop, if you study the way the bees pollinate and bring forth the honey, if you study the process of the caterpillar becoming a butterfly, you will know that you too are gods. I said, if you will but understand the process of how the caterpillar goes from crawling on the ground. The caterpillar is on the ground, crawling through the dirt, crawling through the mud. And then at a certain point in the caterpillar's journey, brothers and sisters, at a certain point, in the caterpillar's journey, he goes through a process. She goes through a process where they get cut off from everything. A process of renewal, a process of solitude, a process of being born again. When the black Christ said, I will rise in three days. He's metaphorically and symbolically talking about the rebirth of your soul. You missed the whole point. You have to go through a cocoonic process. That's why Oya is coming to blow up the old to make way for the new. You got to go through the cocoon because if the caterpillar doesn't go through the metamorphosis, if the caterpillar doesn't cut off the rest of the world, if the caterpillar doesn't turn into herself, into himself, if the caterpillar doesn't turn his back on the world so he can open up himself to God. When the caterpillar goes through the cocoon, he ain't doing nothing but listening to God. He ain't doing nothing but evaluating himself when the caterpillar goes through the cocoon into the darkness of the pineal gland. You have to go into the darkness of the pineal gland. And then the next thing you know, that cocoon rips open. That cocoon rips open and something flies that is so beautiful. Butterflies are some of the most beautiful creatures God has created. Have you seen the colors on these butterflies? Have you seen the radiance of these butterflies? And here's the point that I need y'all to get. And I'm going to land this plane so I get to Nat Turner land. 
Let me land this plane so I can get to Nat Turner land. That butterfly that came out of that cocoon, listen Africans, listen to me global African family, listen to me global African family, that butterfly, that beautiful butterfly that came out of that cocoon was already in the caterpillar when the caterpillar was muddying along, crawling across the earth. When the caterpillar was at his lowest, when the caterpillar was at her lowest, crawling through the dirt and the filth and the mud on the ground, the butterfly was already inside, but the caterpillar couldn't see it. God had to shut everything off from the caterpillar. God had to close the caterpillar off from the world so the caterpillar could bring forth what was already in the caterpillar from day one. But the caterpillar's third eye was blocked. I said the caterpillar's third eye was blocked. The caterpillar was caught up in social media. The caterpillar was caught up on fat asses, small waist, and big titties. The caterpillar was caught up on shango sticks and a big paycheck. Caterpillar was caught up on cruises and vacations and getting drunk and smoking weed and running out in the streets and hanging with the homies. The caterpillar was caught up in everything except perfecting the divine nucleus that was inside. Look at a pregnant woman. When our sisters get pregnant, they go through a process. They go through pain. They go through hormonic imbalances. They go through weight gain. They throw up. They purge. They can't sleep sometimes. Can't stop sleeping. They got to take off of work. They get on a husband's nerves. They get on a family nerve. They get on a children's nerve. Sometimes the most beautiful black woman becomes the most unattractive sister when she's pregnant. But then, after all of the stress and struggle, she brings forth the greatest creation God has given us on this earth a new life. An ancestor returned to complete the mission. Ifatunde. I said an ancestor returned to complete the mission. The point that I'm making, my African family. The greater your reward the more difficult will be your struggle. The greater the reward, the harder will be your walk. The greater the prize, the more difficult the journey. Now is not the time to be quitting. You think you struggled enough. In your arrogance, in your pain, you are still one arrogant as African. In your pain, you are still one arrogant as African. In your pain, you are still one arrogant as African. You got a nerve to ask God. Dear Lord, I've been trying to have a baby for six years. And you ain't gave me a baby yet. I go to church every Sunday. I don't cheat on my husband. I do my children right. Dear Lord, why are you punishing me? I want a natural baby. And the creator speaks to you through dream, through metaphor, through ancestor, through coincidence, through experience. And the good Lord looks down on you from heaven and says... I beg your pardon. Did I just hear you say, my child, that you can't have a baby because I'm blocking you? 
And what I'm doing to you is not fair because you don't cheat on your husband and you raise your kids and you ain't sleeping with no married men and you have a decent life. And so you think that's it, huh? You think that's it? What about the fact your mother is elderly and in need of care and you never go visit your mother? Who do you think I am, little girl? You don't talk to me like that. I made you. You didn't make me. Who you think you talking to? So you're going to talk about how you don't cheat, but you cheating your mother every day of your love. You might not be cheating on your husband, but you cheating on your mother. You cheating on your father. You know your sister out there trying to finish her college degree. She needs somebody to watch them kids when she go takes her class at night, but you too busy to help your children. Yeah, you good to your kids. You good to your husband, but you are only good to the people in your house. The people who don't live with you, you treat them like shit. So I beg your pardon. Don't you blame me for why you can't have a baby. The reason I won't give you no baby because I won't let you raise another woman to be as selfish as you are. If you want to get pregnant, you need to get right with your family and get right with your ancestors. And don't you ever again accuse the almighty Lord of this universe of punishing you. You ain't being punished by me. You being punished by yourself. You will get pregnant the minute your ancestors allow you to conceive after you got right with your mother and father. You better think twice before you try to rebuke me again. Because I will send Shango to punish that ass. I will send Ogun to punish that ass. I will send Obatala to punish that ass. I will send SU to punish that ass. Don't you ever call on me in vain again. Do you understand, little girl? And then black man, you get mad at the Lord too. Black man, you get mad at the Lord too. And you say things like, dear Lord. I went to prison and I serve my debt to society. I've been out here trying to get my business up off the ground and you ain't letting me get my business up off the ground, Lord. It's been seven years I've been struggling to get my business up off the ground and you ain't got my business up off the ground yet, Lord. Why are you punishing me for? And the Lord opens up the heavens and looks at you and he says, Dear narcissist, dear narcissist last time i checked you ain't done no community service to the community that you helped destroy dear narcissist you might have paid your debt to the white man but you raised the whole community of black boys who are doing the same shit you went to jail for and you ain't stepped to none of them and try to lead them down the right path. I'm not the reason your business isn't off the ground yet. I sent Orisha Oya to stop your business endeavor. I sent Oshun to take away your happiness until you rectify all the evil you gave to the black community and until you undo all the evil you gave to the black community, don't you go blaming me for your problems. In fact, little boy, you spiritually undeveloped little boy, let me drop this on you and share it with every African you come across. Tell them that 99% of the problems y'all having down there on that planet I call Earth, 99% of the problems y'all having on earth are self-imposed and have nothing to do with me. Let me say that again. 99% of the problems African people have on the planet earth have nothing to do with the almighty and everything to do with your own karma. And what y'all fail to realize is when I decide it's time to collect karma. I could give a damn about what your plans are. When I decide it's time to collect karma, I could care less about what you're working on. When I decide it's time for your selfish, narcissistic, ungodly ass to pay up, 
I will send the ancestors to collect. I will send the Orisha to collect. I will send the Loa to collect. I will send the angels of the Bible. I will send the angels of the Quran. I will send the angels of the Torah to come and collect. You don't tell me when it's best for you to pay up. I created you in your mother's womb. I sent you to earth to do my work. And somewhere along the line of me sending you through your mother.